the obviously it is this time of year, the transfers and such, um, and agents do cast a big shadow, I think, over over uh, any transfer. They obviously have a huge influence. Um, you know, we're sitting here today, uh, and you've got stories about Richarlison's already agreed five-year deals at Spurs and all this kind of thing. Um, that only gets done one way, and that's through the agents. And that works both ways, by the way, because age- football clubs do use agents for their own uh, purposes. And obviously, if they don't want a player, they'll send out the agent of the player to go and find that player at club. So obviously, they do have um, a big part in the game. But you know, as Brian was saying there, the the fact that so much money goes out of the game, and certainly that money coming from football clubs as well, going into the pockets of agents, it just seems a very peculiar way of doing business. Yeah, I mean, it's growing, isn't it? It's it's been around for for years, haven't they? And you're right, clubs use them, contact them and find out whether a player's interested and all that. But it's still bizarre how the paid, I think. And I think if you're a footballer and you want an agent, fine, and they're there to build your profile and all that, get you commercial deals. Um, but I still believe that whenever a player moves, that the player should be paying the agents. I don't mm-hmm. think football clubs should be paying them. You know, I've just had a look there and the... the Period twenty one to twenty two, two hundred and seventy two million pound mm. were paid to agents. Two hundred and seventy two million pound gone out of the game mm. to agents just on agent fees, and that can't be right. No, I can't be right. That money should be kept in football. The players are given that much money now. That many signing on fees and image rights and everything. They should pay their own agents. Mm. That's the way it is. Why should football? Why should football clubs have to pay agents? Um, doesn't doesn't really make much sense to me. Yeah, and Prime, you know, you've mentioned there on the video about the FA and the Premier League, uh, Premier League, or the UEFA or FIFA doing something. Well, to be honest, FIFA have done the absolute opposite. At FIFA deregulated agents uh, a few years ago and made it even easier for them to be able to uh, create these scenarios. You know, it used to be a situation where they were licensed and they had to go through all kinds of uh, checks and stuff. And now it just seems like it is a massive free-for-all. And obviously we now have collections of large, um, influential groups steered by, obviously, super agents. Mm. Um, and we're seeing that you know they're getting more and more influence in the game you know, because of all this money and the power. And then how, you know, we're starting to see it where... Clubs like Wolves and you know where they have they bring in you know these agents who are de facto directors of football. We obviously had that at our club where we've had influence from on the outside as well, where players are coming in, mm-hmm. um, and it's a very murky business, isn't it? Because mm. you know managers, you know they they've got agents. They might have the same agents as certain players. And then it all just starts to become really murky in terms of, you know, when, and if that money is getting paid by the football clubs to the agents to bring in these players there's, and there's no guarantees, that, you know, it, it, does, it does start to get a little bit a little bit worrying. Not only that there's money, got so much money going out, but sometimes some of the players that they're bringing in, that they're advising clubs to go after, seems to me, uh, yeah, something, you know, something really does need to, to uh, happen. To watch the rest of this video and to access exclusive live content, scan the QR code or click the link in the description to join us over on Patreon.